What's up, friends? Today we're talking about the Saunders Metacycle, again! And we're gonna talk about some performance specs, and what I have on this napkin might actually be more accurate than what's on the Saunders website. Okay, okay, that's a little dramatic, but still, there's some major conflicting information with regards to the performance of this bike and the weight increase, and today, we're gonna talk about it. We're also gonna rerun the simulation from the last video and see how that extra weight is going to impact the performance of this bike. Let's get into it! So welcome back, friends. Thanks for coming back. It's been a while since I made a Metacycle-related video. I've really been trying to stay away from the topic and watch from afar as Saunders becomes this wonderfully transparent, customer-oriented company. Uh, do you feel like they're there yet? I mean, eh. Sure, let's give them some props. We've got some, you know, Instagram content from what looks like production in China, and we've got the same cut-dry responses from whoever's manning the Zendesk ticketing system that day. But. Uh, but I'm gonna be real with you. Saunders could have and should have developed more of an open relationship with customers like I've seen from other companies. People want more visibility and transparency. And it's okay as a company to not always have the answers when you're developing a new product. But being open and communicating effectively through this process with your customer is good. It's just good PR. And to me, this is a direct reflection of the CEO Storm himself. Would it really be that hard to live stream once a month? Show your face, answer some questions. You know, hell, just make a video with some product updates. And please, 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 just spend more money on PR and your customer facing front. Like doing so would go such a long way with your customers and give them more faith in you. Because I mean, let's be real, without your customers, you're nothing. I don't even wanna know how many Metacycle refunds they've had to process. What do you guys think? You think it's 10, 20, 50? It's gotta be over 100. Definitely over 100 refunds completed. And on another note, don't even get me started on the Saunders EV three-wheeled car deal that they've got going on, because that's a rabbit hole for an entire another video, and that's been going on for four plus years now. Anyways, Saunders, hit me up. I'd love to talk. I'm sure you probably hate me, but I actually would love to help you out if you want some help. And guys, keep in mind, I don't make anything off of YouTube. I make not, not much. So I'm just here to help the average Metacycle consumer through these rough, turbulent times. With that being said, don't get too down after watching this video. Remember, I want the company to succeed, but I gotta be honest and use math and set some things straight. Okay, so what's up with this weight increase that everyone's talking about? Everyone's heard about it. As most of you know, the curb weight figure changed on the website from 200 pounds to around 300 pounds. Now, Saunders claims that this was originally a mistake and that the planned weight was always 300 pounds, that their design always accounted for that value. But they also said that they gained weight to meet casting process requirements and safety standards, which if you mention safety, you know, no one's gonna question anything, right? You just say safety, safety. Oh, okay. Regardless of what reason they needed to add some blubber to the Metacycle, it doesn't matter because it's still going to underperform. That's right, don't let this weight increase take away from the fact that the specs listed on their website still do not match the acceleration or zero to 60 time. And the weight increase isn't really gonna affect your top speed at all. Which, by the way, that 80 mile an hour top speed is still You can see why in this video that I made back in the day. What's funny to me is if they designed to this weight the entire time, then that really makes me question if they know what the hell they're doing. Again, something doesn't add up between the performance specs listed on the website and the specs for power and torque. Something stinks. All right, moving on to simulation. We're going to simulate the Metacycle running the World Motorcycle Test Cycle, which is a standard test cycle that the world uses to estimate the energy used for a motorcycle riding a mix of city and highway riding. Whew. I went in depth on this subject in the last video if you want to go back and fully understand it. A 200 pound Metacycle with a single rider average American male of like 198 pounds, riding over the 18 miles of the WMTC combined, it gives us an energy used of like 1.776 kilowatt hours. This equates to about 98.6 watt hours per mile being consumed, or 44% of the four kilowatt hour battery over that 18 miles. Riding continuously, riding continuously this way would net you about 40 miles of range. Okay, so let's add 100 pounds of good old fashioned blubber to the curb weight of this bike and rerun the simulation. Looks like we used about 1.878 kilowatt hours with the added weight, which equates to 104.3 watt hours per mile, or 47% of the four kilowatt hour battery pack. And riding continuously this way would net you about 38 miles of range. So it's not that much of a difference with regards to weight. Now where you will see a difference with the weight is going to be in the acceleration or zero to 60 time. So here we are, let's talk zero to 60. 
real quick. I did a sanity check using a 2016 Zero DX ZF13 just to make sure I'm not fudging up the math. Uh, this bike has a zero to 60 time of 5.7 seconds and has a motor torque output of 68 pound feet listed. Now this zero uses a mid drive motor. So the torque is multiplied through the gearing right to the rear sprocket and sees about 315 pound feet of torque at the wheel. That's almost 2.5 times the peak torque of the Metacycle. The Zero also weighs 100 pounds more than the Metacycle, but running these numbers through the calculator, I get a zero to 60 time for the Zero of 5.6 seconds. So I'm about 0.1 second off, which makes sense, right? Because I'm not factoring in aerodynamic drag and other losses. I've used this calculator with other bikes before and it's always been pretty damn accurate. So let's look at 200 pound versus 300 pounds, zero to 60 time. With the acceleration calculator, I'm seeing a zero to 60 time of about 8.5 seconds for the 200 pound Metacycle. Again, keep in mind, we're not factoring in aerodynamic drag, friction, other losses, whatever, right? So it's gonna be even more than the time that I quote now. All right, let's fatten her up. Let's get up to 300 pounds. So I have a zero to 60 time of, okay, that was kind of mean. I, you gotta admit, that was pretty funny though, right? Talk about placement, right? Talk about ad placement. <laughs> zero to 60 time for a 300 pound curb weight bike is just over 10.5 seconds. Yes, four and a half seconds beyond what Saunders is quoting. And again, no aerodynamics, no losses, at this point, I'm like, what do you, what do we need to hit zero to 60 in six seconds? I, and, and I have an answer for that. You'd need about 250 pound feet of torque peak at the wheel to hit zero to 60 in six seconds. But, but T. Rowan, if I go on the website, I, I see 130 pound feet of torque peak. Yes. Yes, my friend. And that is what hurts me so bad. But whatever, uh, the point is, Saunders specs show that the bike will underperform. And you shouldn't have to modify a bike that you paid for to make it perform the way that they say that it will. So unless they're sandbagging on the specs and it has much more performance than their listing, uh, you're stuck with this problem. If I was smart, I would come up with some kind of solution to fix this and unlock the performance of this bike, you know, when it does come out. Uh, yo, someone send this video to the company so we can get some kind of response from their engineering team or, you know, just more radio silence. I'm willing to post all of the calculations, the math, everything, wherever I need to, uh, to get more visibility and, pe and people can check it for me. You guys can check it, check my math. Moving on, let's talk about production. So first round production is supposed to finish sometime in April, 2022 and start shipping to customers by June. Everyone's heard this, right? But I'm a betting man. So let's make a wager. I'll bet that the first 10 bikes don't get delivered to customers until after July 1st. I'll be honest, would you take that bet? Leave a comment if you're interested. How about the battery connection? Based on this Instagram content, we get a taste of what the super massive black looks like on a bike. And we also see the battery connections for the first time. It looks like they're using some kind of quick disconnect Amphenol connector. These type of connectors have a quick release lever that you squeeze to disconnect. Uh, I mean, it's not terrible to have to do that. And another little interesting bit of information that I, I thought it was interesting. Uh, according to Saunders, as of now, there is no smartphone app planned for the Metacycle. So I'm kind of interested in making one so that you can tune the bike and increase performance if you have to. We'll see how that shakes out. Well, guys, that's gonna do it for this video. I was trying to keep it short. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed this and I also hope that you get a Metacycle this year and that it doesn't suck. Maybe, if anything, this video puts more pressure on Saunders and they start delivering from a PR standpoint because you guys deserve more information. You deserve more transparency from them. We'll see, but uh, go ahead and smash that like button if you enjoyed the video. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you like this content and you like the other content I'm cranking out. I got more stuff on the way, always. Go ahead and follow me on Instagram at troan underscore techworks. I got some cool stuff behind the scenes, you know, what I'm up to outside of YouTube. And most importantly, Stay sane and be safe out there.